Hello everybody, Infernape Shinjo here. Let's talk about babies. No, not like that. Baby Pokemon. Ever since Generation 2, baby Pokemon were introduced as a way to kind of bring old Pokemon back into the spotlight and as well to give new designs and new pre-evos to mods that were somewhat unrelated in the case of mods like Tyrogue. And if my math is correct, there are 19 baby Pokemon as of Sword and Shield. And today, I am going to be listing off my top 10 baby Pokemon. Now, of course, it's more difficult to rank baby Pokemon rather than different kinds of mods, say legendaries or starters, because baby Pokemon aren't really meant to be used in competitive settings. So any idea of why I like this Mon is purely from a design aspect and how it was represented in the anime. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started with my top 10 baby Pokemon. So beginning this list is Bond's Lie. Now Bond's Lie, I never really would say that I didn't like it. I never really said that I loved it. But I do appreciate the little nod that it had in Pokemon XD, I believe it was, where you could actually battle it before the generation it was even introduced. And then, of course, Brock had one in the anime that gave it a little bit more credibility. Overall, I think it's a cool mon, especially the whole concept of when it cries, it's not actually crying. It's more because it's pretending to be a tree or something to that effect. I can't remember the exact thing but it's not actually tears. And the fact that, to my knowledge, it's the only rock type baby Pokemon, which is kind of neat. On the flip side of this, we have Mime Jr. Now, I feel like I'm not in the minority for saying this. I wasn't really the biggest fan of Mr. Mime. To be fair, I'm still not to an extent, but I do like Mime Jr. Just like how Brock had Bonsai in the Sinnoh anime, James had Mime Jr. and I love how Mime Jr. just copied every single one of James's mannerisms. It was a fun addition to the Team Rocket squadron. So continuing this list, not everything is from Sinnoh, I swear, we have Budu. So I think it's a similar thing with Bonsai and Mime Jr. from before. I never really thought much of Roselia. Mainly because Pokemon like Sudowoodo and Mr. Mime in the previous entries were standalone Pokemon, much like Roselia was. But then these pre-evos came in, and in this situation, it got an evolution in Rose Raid, which I think might be one of my favorite grass types. I don't know if I can make a case for my exact favorite, but I really like it. I think what really helped this for me is I used a Rose Raid in my playthrough of Brilliant Diamond a little while ago, and I started it as a Budu, so raising it up through friendship and just evolving it all the way just made it feel a little bit more special to me. And the fact that Nando, a pretty cool character in the Sinnoh anime, also started off having one is just really cool. So, we have Cleffa, and... There's a bit of a story with this one. So, I haven't played it in a while. But maybe a couple of months ago, I decided to replay through Pokemon Sun. And I was racking my brain for a new team member. And I'm up on Mount Hokulani, I think it's called. And Beldum can be caught up there. I tried catching a couple of Beldums. Didn't work. Of course it didn't. But then I ran into a Cleffa, and I thought a fairy type wouldn't be bad for my team. So I caught the Cleffa. So that's where the story ends. I haven't evolved it into a Clefairy or even Clefable yet. I haven't decided if it's going to stay on my team. Heck, I haven't even played the game as of late. So that's mainly the reason that I have it on this list. That and the fact that the Pokemon Journeys episode focusing on Cleffa pretty recently was just a really good episode in my opinion. Not really top tier, but just a really nice wholesome episode. And then the fact that Clefairy is a pretty iconic mon, and I really like Cleffa's design, as simple as it is. 
So at six, we have Azuru. And not to give too much away, it's the only Hoenn baby Pokemon on this list. And I don't know what exactly possessed me to include this on the list, but I just think it's hilarious how, first of all, Azuru in most of its artwork always looks like it's crying. And I, not gonna lie, feel kind of sorry for it in that case. But I also like how in the games it was introduced, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, it was a normal type, while the other two were water type. They kind of retconned it by giving them all the fairy type later on, but I just love how it changes types, and as well, it can change genders, because Azuro's gender split is 75-25, more leaning towards female, I believe. So when you evolve it, it could change from a male to a female, or a female to a male. I can't remember the exact details of it. But I just find that kind of funny how it can do that. And the fact that Azuro can legitimately have huge power. So in Little Cup, it might actually be a threat. A smack dab in the middle of the list is another Sinnoh baby, Munchlax. And Munchlax, much like Bonsly, was introduced way before the games it was in. And it is just a really iconic mon. Like... You could look around for people that play Pokemon. I don't think they would argue that Snorlax is a pretty decent mon. I don't think I know a single person that says they would actively despise Snorlax. So the fact that they gave such a pretty well-loved Pokemon like Snorlax a baby is a bit of a hard task to do. But I think they did well. And the fact that May had a Munchlax and it was just hilarious to watch in the anime, especially with Metronome, is just... A really cool mon. And finding it in Sinnoh, good luck, buddy. Speaking of Sinnoh, number four is Riolu. And I'm not one of those people that is on the Lucario hype train as much as others. But I do got to give props to Riolu and Lucario. They are pretty decently designed mons. If they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be as well received. But Riolu is just a cool mon. It got its own little thing in the Pokemon Ranger games. It got its own little Sinnoh special in the anime. Like Ash had one recently. Needless to say, Riolu is a pretty well-loved mon. And fighting types? Probably one of my favorite typings, maybe next to fire. Realistically, the only reason that it's not higher on the list is because I don't want to give it more credibility and more love than it already has. Because... Riolu and Lucario are just loved way too much, and I want to be hipster and put something different on my list. That's it. Facing <music> third is Elekid, and realistically, you probably already know what I'm going to say at this point. The only legitimate reason that Elekid is here is because of Paul. If Paul wouldn't have started with Elekid and evolved it all the way to Electivire and Sinnoh, I probably wouldn't have given Elekid the time of day. But looking back on it, especially Paul's Elekid's personality at the start all the way up till it finally evolves, it's just really cool. And when I see Elekid or even any of the Evos, it just makes me think of the Sinnoh rivalry between Ash and Paul and it makes me really happy. Speaking of Ash and Paul, number two, Pichu, another electric baby Pokemon. You think of baby Pokemon that people love, I don't think that you'd find one as much well received as Pichu. Maybe besides the number one. But Pichu's pretty well designed. And kind of like Munchlax that I mentioned earlier, Pikachu is the mascot. So introducing a baby form for the mascot of the entire franchise is kind of hard to do. And realistically, at least from my perspective, Pichu is such an easy Pokemon to draw because I've done it so much that I could probably do it without even looking at a picture. I remember drawing this thing so much and it just gives me great memories of a time when things were a lot more peaceful. Speaking of happy times, number one baby Pokemon is Togepi. I don't think I could have had it be anything else. Pichu is definitely a close runner. But it's going to have to be Togepi. It was introduced so early into the Kanto anime. It was around 
for all this time. It got an evolution in Johto, which is pretty cool because I don't know how many people actually use Togetic in Johto before Togekiss, but if you did, good on you, you got a flyer. But then in Sinnoh, it gets the amazing Pokemon Togekiss. And then in Gen 6, it gets the Fairy type. Togekiss comes packed with Serene Grace, so it can learn moves like Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, all these different moves that you can give statuses to your opponent. You can flinch them out with Air Slash, and since Togekiss is so fast, you won't have to worry about anything. And to think, all that started from a little baby known as Togepi. Togepi just brings me back to the Pokemon anime from the very start. And Misty traveling with it for so long just brings me back to those great times and that's why Togepi has to be number one. So that's my list of top 10 baby Pokemon. I did it in a little bit of a different style than the other top 10s that I made, but I didn't want to bog it down with a lot of specific memories from each Pokemon, so I tried to cut it up into small chunks that I could, just so the video is not too long. But another top 10 I'm going to record right after this, so if you like this style of it, I might just keep doing it for the rest of them. But let me know your favorite baby Pokemon down in the comments section. And if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time. Momentai!